Huh. It, tell me if it's still breaking up. Is it still breaking up now? Can you hear me now? I'm t sorry. I'm testing folks. They said the network isn't working quite right. Hmm. Can you hear me? Just a second here. Let's see. Can you hear me, uh, John? I can't hear you though. I wonder what's happening here. Do you have your mic muted? Okay, hold on a second. Just a second. I gotta check something. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hold on. I don't know what you want to try to do. So, so the mic's being read right here. Huh. And then the mic is being. Oh, let's. That might be. Test, test. But John, you can't hear us either, can you? You can hear us, but I can't. You say something though, John. See, he's talking. I can't hear. Him. That's a separate issue. So can you hear me now? I'll just wait. I haven't done anything. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So about putting here. And then let's verify that you hear this. Okay, I hear that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess we could restart this for good measure. <clears throat> Can you hear me at all, Ashley? Be knocked out for a second. At least you can't hear me yet. So, yeah. okay, reopen it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So he's receiving our audio. Right. And it looks like the radio is receiving yours. Testing one, two, three, but we're not hearing. And can you hear him? He's try saying something, okay? One, two. This is yeah, John Brennan. Okay. Oh, now it's working. Okay, now it's working. There we go. All right, so what do we have to do? I'll go ahead and start it. Put it back the way it was. All right, we'll try this again, my friends. This is technology. Actually, a perfect night to have John Preto interviewed. I careful not to <laughs> knock that there. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this interview tonight. And uh, because this is John's area of specialty is technology. And it's all because of you. It didn't work for a couple of minutes. I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what happened? Actually, I think I know my, what might have happened. I think I might have, I think I, before, earlier, I kicked out the plug or pulled the plug out of the bottom of my mic. When we plugged it back in, it must have not reset properly or something. It, it's, it's a, com and because we're also simulcasting on the radio, it's, it's more complicated than the typical setup simultaneously. But my friends, I want to tell you a little bit about John Preto. I, I got a chance to hear him speak just last week. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, he's a native of Nevada, and he's been in the technology sphere for a long, well, for over 30 years. He actually worked with Tony Robbins and a lot of really well-known people. He, his organization helped Tony Robbins set up their virtual. Uh, when, when COVID came along, you guys, you guys helped set them up with that, right? To be able to do it virtually. Guys in our group have been set Tony Robbins up, yes. And that's, that's pretty amazing. And he, he helped found uh, HelloNetwork.com. And he's also he got a, quite a few different things that you're you've got you're you're working on multiple things, aren't you? Uh, you I'm, also. I, oh, go ahead. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd, Bob. <laughs> that summarizes the whole story, right? We yeah. don't have to say anything further. He's a nerd. <laughs> no, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I have a doctor. This is what she tells me too. She's a nerd. It's kind of funny. Um, and uh, but anyway, I'm really. I mean, he had a very interesting talk telling us about artificial intelligence. Uh, he's also a Christian, so sort of interesting getting his perspective on things from more than one perspective. And, uh, and and a lot of people are talking about right now. It's a hot topic. Probably only get hotter actually over time. You know the whole impact of artificial intelligence on us all. I don't think any of us really know uh, where it's going to take us actually. But that's just humanity, right? I mean, we we've never known where anything takes us, do we? I don't think so. What do you think, John? 
No, there's, you know, we we have adapted as humans throughout our history about you know, 100,000 or 200,000 years as humans. And so we adapt and overcome. That's what we're, that's what we'll do with AI as well. Well, you know, it's a good example. I think about iPhones, okay? So I'm holding up my iPhone here. Everybody, most people have an iPhone or some sort of a phone like that. And you know, it's funny, <laughs> Steve Jobs is definitely one of my heroes. He's a very fascinating person. But I remember watching a video of him and I think it was 2004, he goes, you know, people don't understand. He says, it, it's still out there. I mean, you can look it up. You probably have seen it. He says, you can create a tool for people that changes the whole world. And, and this is, he's saying this in like 2004. And fast forward three years later, the iPhone's introduced. And this little thing, including the ones that copy it, I, I guess I could say that fairly. Um, you know, there was all the different mobile phones that are, have basically the internet on them, was not around before, right? So... Now, I've seen some science fiction movies about this. You can't go into a restaurant where about half the people are not sitting there looking at a phone. So it's, it's like, he, at, whether it's good or whether it's bad, I'm not 100% sure. But the bottom line is, he came up with something that literally just changed the world. It's changed the world. Now, like every change, whether the invention of nuclear power, whether the invention of fire, every single change, antibiotics, um, brings good, but it, if it's mismanaged, it doesn't bring good. So it's it's like it's power, really, in its raw sense, right, or opportunity. So it can take you more than one direction, right? Yes, it's a tool. Tool. It's a tool. That's a good way to look at it. And we human beings, isn't that what supposedly makes us different? Another, yes. We use tools? <laughs> 100%. So anyway, so tonight, my friends, we, we want to fo focus, I want to talk to John a little bit about what he thinks is happening with it, artificial intelligence. Uh, I know some people are scared about it. Um, I'm not one of those people scared about it. Maybe I should be. I'm not sure. Um, I'll kind of figure we'll figure out. I, I look at it more as an opportunity that if, if we play it right, some of the most basic drudgery of humanity might be able to be uh, done by machines, which, of course, that creates a different set of problems, doesn't it? Then how are you going to give people jobs if a lot of the jobs are done by machines, right? So there's again puzzles, aren't there? But so what 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 are some of your thoughts on all these things, John? So so I'm I'm I have a manuscript that's halfway finished that I started 20 years ago called Human 2.0. It follows the wave of technology from the agricultural age, stone age, agricultural age, industrial age, the information age, and we have adapted as humans throughout these ages. Now AI would still consider us in the in the, the information age, but next will be the biological age where we're able to do genetic engineering and all kinds of interesting things with our bodies to propel us forward. Um, AI has been around for 70 years. And so Turing, Alan Turing back in the fifties wrote some of the first papers on artificial intelligence. And now because of fast computers, the Nvidia cards uh, and new algorithms that were recently uh, written and access to lots of data via the internet, those three forces have come together to create the inflection point for artificial intelligence. And there's some amazing things coming to fruition and some scary things coming to fruition as well. And so I'm a huge optimist. It's gonna change the world in a positive way and, and we'll have some negative things. In fact, uh, when I spoke at the, the Rotary a couple of weeks ago, the first thing that I said is I can take a TikTok from your kids it, or, or Instagram. And if it's two, three minutes long, I can duplicate their voice and you won't be able to tell the difference. And then they could use that voice to call your, your grandparents up and ask for ransom. And then this, this lady at the end of my speech during the Q and a raised her hand. She says, I got a call from what I thought was my grandchild. And they asked for $8,000. And I said, exactly. So that kind of thing is happening right now based upon some um, advanced AI tools for cloning voices. So that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I was thinking, it just opens up a whole can of worms, doesn't it? Yeah. And it also, yeah, it, creates, it creates some defenses too. Anybody can say, that wasn't me. That was something artificial. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't believe anything you see or hear. Uh, anymore, especially next year with the elections coming, there's going to be just some crazy um, misinformation coming from AI because I can duplicate any of the candidates and I can have them say anything I want. So 
uh, it's going to be some problem. There's some regulation. You know, Elon Musk and all of the CEOs of all the big AI companies were at the White House for the third time here uh, two weeks ago. And so you'll see some you'll see some regulation hit um soon within within the the next 12 months or so that will help but they won't be able to help everything and certainly china and russia won't listen to our regulations that's what i was going to say so, you know how, yeah. the, these regulations part of me maybe, maybe they will work i don't know <clears throat> in some ways maybe within our country they will but they certainly won't stop third parties from dumping things on the internet right i mean correct and yeah. i don't know how you filter that out that, that's going to be an interesting and, we, and, and then the second part of that is how much do we want to filter out? I mean, we obviously want to filter all the net, the uh, phony stuff out, but we, along with that potential, th th people can filter out things they don't agree with, right? And then so it's a tricky game to be on, isn't it? One of the interesting things that I think we'll see come to fruition is anything that's generated. Generative AI is the is the term that they're using for, uh, you know, I use Photoshop and there's another program called Mid Journey where I can create images that look amazing. I showed some of them at the last speech at the last speech that I gave where I met Bob again for the I've known Bob for 30 years, I think, when <laughs> I met him first. And um, they're, they look like photographs. I think that all of those generated images and possibly generated text will have will have some sort of a watermark in it so that people can identify that it's either written in text and AI, or it's generated with imagery with AI. I think that's coming. So we're going to, John, stay with me, because we can keep talking on Facebook. Where The radio is going to go to a break right now, and because, uh, again, it's simulcasting on the radio and on Facebook. And, but you and I can continue the conversation. So for those of you listening on the radio, this could be a great night talking talk to John Preto, a leader in the AI industry. He's worked with some very huge names. And uh, if you, you need to hear this to learn. Um, so... This is Robert Seidel. We'll be back in a minute, The Gateway Show, but stay with us on Facebook. So, and just somebody just put in a, on Facebook, she says, I'm a voice actor, and our industry is concerned with AI and how it will affect our future. What do you think, what do you say to a person like that? That's great, Linda. So, I have, I'm part of a media group that we meet every morning from 7 to 9. Several guys in our group are, in, uh, are voice actors. And so um, there's a program called Eleven Labs, which is the program that we use to duplicate voices. It's not as good as humans yet, but it will be in the next five years. It will be. So it's it's a challenge. Um, but today they're tools. They're tools to extend people. So a lot of the actors have cloned their voices, like James Earl Jones, and uh, what's his name that just got dementia. His name just flew right out of my head. They're, they're recording their voices for posterity and for licensing moving forward. Um, and so I think that you're fine for at least the next five year period for voice acting because um, the inflections, the energy, the enthusiasm uh, is not uh, as good as human beings today. But like you say, John, that's only temporarily, right? Five, five to 10 years, I would say. Which probably means two. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is really five. Who knows? Five to ten. Yeah, all these things tend to go faster than we think, or some of them do anyway. You know, the one uh, area. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so artificial general intelligence is is what everybody's scared about, and that's that's about ten years away, and that that's when computers become uh, equal to or greater than intelligence in humans. And that's when it gets really scary. And then they're once they get to that point, it's exponential. And so they'll they'll be a hundred or a million times more intelligence than humans in the next twenty years. <laughs> it's interesting to think about that. What that actually even means. You know. Uh, it's it, it can be fantastic or it could be very bad. Huh. And so it's up to us to steer it in the right direction. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, uh, yeah, I mean, it's again, it's one of those notions that we just don't know, do we? In a perfect world, and it would be fantastic, right? Yes. Uh, it, is it wouldn't be abused or misused. Correct. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. As, yeah, as, for as, material as we... material sciences, better, better batteries, better solar panels, medicine, uh, mathematics, science, all kinds of things now are being solved in AI today. 
And so that that is going to accelerate over the next decade. And then we need to thwart the negativity as best we can. So I think we're about to go back. There we go. Let's see. Or maybe I've gone. Yeah, we're about to go back on. Just a second. Angel Hill. We're about to go back on right now. Good evening, this is Robert Seidel. You're listening to The Gateway Show on live every Sunday evening, 6 to 7 p.m. It's a great, great pleasure to be here. The goal of this show is to try to bring inspiration, new ideas, uh, so that you can live a happier, more effective life. I, I personally am convinced, and it's not, a, it's not uh, new to me, but the idea that this world really, the opportunities of this world are limitless. So the real question for us all individually is, how can we keep stimulating our minds in such a way so we come up with those new ideas that could change our lives in vastly better ways? And it's one of my real dreams and the dream behind this show is how can all of us live more effectively on this earth? We, the earth is such a wonderful gift, this, this place. And it's like, how can we learn to live on this earth in a way that honors its magnificence and beauty, that makes the light, quality of life better for the average human being? So that's been one of my dreams for a long time. I, I, I believe that's uh, I believe in God, and I know um, John does too. And uh, and I think we, we, one of the things I, I really, in my heart, believe, that's what God wants us to live happily, joyfully in this world. I really believe that. Um, so AI, tonight, he's talking to us about AI. And uh, and, and it, that's going to be, I when the internet first came out, John, I thought, this is going to be like crack cocaine to the human race. <laughs> and and, and, I, and I think it's had all sorts of consequences already, that I wasn't expecting. At the moment, I'm not gonna really get into them, but different trends and everything's like that that are happening. Because somebody can come up with an idea, next thing you know, they share it with everybody else, and everybody thinks this is a great idea. And people go running off one direction or another. Um, so that's what I saw with the internet. And now AI is the internet on steroids, really, right? Isn't that kind of what we're talking about? Well, I, I kind of met you in the beginning of the internet, I believe. Um, so I, I was there in the beginning of the internet, 1988. I got my first connection at UNLV. So you had to go to the supercomputer center at UNLV and they would give you a dial up phone number that you would call in to one of the servers there. And then from there, you could use one of the old protocols to jump to servers at all the universities and the military bases. So, since 88 and i i made my living on the internet for the past 30 years hello network was my one of my companies which was a streaming organization here based in las vegas and we did live streaming back in 1996 and so we did i produced L, the pga lpga dnc convention kelsey grammar joe walsh we had very very early streaming they call me the grandfather of streaming because i've been doing it for 20 you know eight years now and so and, and now, even today, we do streaming every day. We've done it so since March of, of 2020 during the pandemic, and we broadcast every morning. And so you see my set, all this gear is related to my streaming. Uh, By the way, his, what's this, behind him is real. It's not a, it's not a green screen. <laughs> yeah, this is all real equipment and real gear. This is my office, and this is what, I, this is what we do. So we produce live streams for for organizations um we've done it for many many years and that this is one of my one of my um um one of my businesses and then ai falls in you know the it I, I, i'm a nerd i've been a nerd for 30 years we studied ai in college in the late 80s we studied neural networks in the 80s and the problem back then was we didn't have the computers fast enough to run the neural networks that they do so it took 35 years to come to fruition and using the same architecture that they developed 30 years ago for these neural networks this is exactly how gpt works which is generative pre-trained transformer transformer is the method of the neural network for gpt so if you type in gpt and ask it questions and it gives you information and then you can continue along with conversations and then this week they just added imagery into gpt i don't know if you saw that or not bob I just, you know, it's funny. My son was showing me, it's directly correlated. He says that um, if you don't want to pay for GPT now, you can just use Edge 
the Edge yes. uh, browser, and you can, it's included for free in that, right? Is that true? That seems, if you... So Microsoft owns 50% of OpenAI, and they have the rights to use GPT-4, and they've integrated it. They're integrated into every one of their applications and the operating system. So AI, GPT-4, is going to be integrated into Windows 11. And so you're going to see it everywhere. And AI is going to become ubiquitous. People ask me about what applications am I using, et cetera. Every application you're you're going to use is going to end up some sort of AI is going to be built into every application. You know, you know what this reminds me of? You probably remember, well, actually, I got somebody named Angel Hill says, love you, John. I don't, you probably know who that is, I'm guessing. She's one of my friends, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I just passed that on to you. So, uh, you know, I remember, I'm going to tell you, this will send you back in time just a little bit. I still remember this. My brother and I, when we we got these dial-up modems like you're talking about. So he's over in Los Angeles. I'm sitting here, and we had a green screen, right? The old green screens. And there's a cursor, right? A C with a, whatever you call it, the C cursor. And um, suddenly... C prompt. C prompt, that's right. So suddenly, I can yep. see his words. Hi, this is Jim. The words just appearing right across the screen. We thought, and I could type back, we <laughs> thought that was like the most unbelievable yeah. thing imaginable. That that was like little kids, you know, yeah. getting our two cans and with a string between them and talking to each other. Um, there's no most people don't know what I'm talking about. Either. Good analogy. Do, do do you remember that too? Cans and strings between them, or were you too young for that? Did you ever use that at all? Oh no, no, we did that one. Yeah, of course, Campbell soups cans with the string, a wax, a wax string in between the two. There you go. See, now that, that, think about that the, great. It didn't work really great. That's like a true statement. But <laughs> but the interesting thing to think about that. That's how much things have changed in your or my lifetime. Yeah, I mean, uh, and then when, when even when we were kids, and you're, again, you're ten years younger than me, but when we were when I was young, there were no computers. I mean, there may have been some very preliminary ones from IBM and a couple of places, but certainly no individual computers to deny all, my knowledge. When I came to Las Vegas in 1982, that's just or 1983, that's just when the IBM PC was coming out, and right. it was one floppy disk, and that was it. But we that's were right. very we were very excited about that floppy disk. It's three three sixty k. I, I maybe right. it wasn't three. I, th I think that might be right. Three hundred sixty k. It's absolutely right. Something like that. Anyway, um, yeah. yeah. Linda's saying Angel's saying live streaming has been a passion of her since two thousand eight. Uh, yeah. You know, I so so he, so that we, we are in a very very rare time on this earth. But the interesting thing about it is, with all of our toys, I'll call them toys. They're, they're, toys are tools, right? Tools and toys are almost interchangeable, right? Um, a, a phone is really a toy, at least for us men, especially, I think we, there's kind of like a toy, but maybe for women just as much. And, um, but, but they're also extraordinary tools and, but like we can get, here's the weird thing about humanity though, John, to me anyway, we can get all these incredible tools, but has it, to what extent is it improving the quality of our lives? It's like, I remember when I first got the phone, I realized, gosh, I can, be almost anywhere and take a call, which is actually a gift. I do like that. But the other side of it is, I don't have the same privacy I used to have either. So, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of this catch-22. So then people start to feel like they're enslaved a little bit to their technology. So, and I suppose the same dynamic may come true a little bit with, with AI. I don't know. By the way, as a lawyer, I've been a lawyer for 46 years now. Um, that's a big talk now among all of us is what is AI going to be? You know, how is it going to change the legal profession? <laughs> so, so I have a, I, I have an attorney that uh, works with me and, and we talk about it and he's, he's, his wife has a, um, a nutraceutical company and he had me look up some studies done on uh, pomegranates. His stuff is based on pomegranate oil. And the studies that came back from GPT were completely made up and fake. And then there's a famous court case in Texas that the that the attorney used. All three cases that he submitted to his case to the judge were all made up and wrong. And that's called hallucinations. That's what they call it. Uh, that's what I. Yeah, well, that's a good term for it. I mean, yeah. uh, the interesting. I heard. I have heard that from you and a couple other people, but it's pretty hard for me to believe it. Now, hard for me to imagine that this intelligent stuff doesn't know the difference between something it's making up and something that's real. That, that's hard. That's hard for you to get that one. It's part of its, it's part of its allure because it's quite creative because it also can do poems and music and lyrics, etc. And so 
Microsoft actually, I don't know if they still have it. I haven't checked in about a month or so. used to have a selection on more creative or more accurate. And so you could, you could select whether you wanted the algorithm to be more uh, succinct and accurate over creativity. And the creativity is part of the hallucination side of how the algorithms work. I mean, it, it shows you my ignorance about it, but it seems like, well, I'm sure that anything designed for lawyers will have to root that problem out, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to be a reason to market that to somebody and say, well, you know, it's really good, but it might make up some of this stuff. <laughs> it's it's one of their primary focuses, OpenAI. They talk about it all the time. Every time they go out, they, they talk specifically about that. And you're going to see additional technology um, help confirm or, or minimize the hallucinations, I should say. And so that that will be minimized. What I do is I'll put a, my question in all three of the LLMs. All, so ChatGPT, Bard, and then Claude is the other one. And so you kind of get a cross-reference. If two of them say the same thing, I got a good indication that what they're saying is correct. Um, and if it's creative, you can get the best parts of all three of those LLMs. Because you can put in, you can go to these different things, chat GPT and say, give me a um, contract for a tenancy, a landlord tenancy or something. Yeah. And, they may, and, and probably a lot of times I'm guessing it's probably pretty good. Now if They're pretty good. But, but I will say being a lawyer to, to warn people that you, if you, it's the things you don't think about that you leave out, especially if, it's a, if there's any significant money involved. They could have a huge impact on you. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I use it as a tool, and everything that I write that's legal based, I run through my attorney. Yeah, that's honestly, I, it might sound like I'm biased because I'm a lawyer, but well, I don't even do that kind of work. So typically, I'm I'm, I'm in the personal injury field, but it's uh, it's a lot. Of, it's a false economy. I just explain this to my kids too. One of my kids is in business, and I say, if you're going to buy something, it's cost a million dollars, a business transaction, let's say or several hundred thousand dollars, it's probably worth talking to an attorney to see if there's anything you're overlooking. You 100%. Because it could, it could back, backfire on you. Okay, we're gonna go to a break again. This is Robert Seidel, you're listening to The Gateway Show. We're interviewing John Preto tonight, uh, who's an expert in artificial intelligence and all sorts of techno technological areas, in streaming, live streaming. So stay tuned, we'll be back in just a moment. This is Robert Seidel. So, John, it's uh, I want to try to get a couple ideas here. What am I thinking about? I'd like to just see what you see as the possibility in the most positive sense that AI can bring to us. What, 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 what pops into your head? What is the, what is the possibility that, that can be unfolded now? So, so that's like a whole show unto itself. What I do in my presentations now, refined over half a year now that I've been presenting, is productivity tools for businesses and 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 then i cite real studies that have been done for each one of the departments common departments inside of a business so the legal department operations uh, security and surveillance it and i show the productivity increases uh, in each one of those based on studies and it's significant. And so using the tools today, you're going to see huge productivity increases uh, for business. On the creative side, we're seeing all kinds of tools, Adobe, so Photoshop, Illustrator, all of the tools that Adobe remarkets, are uh -huh. all being integrated in with AI now. So creating images and, and compositions is just unbelievable as a time saver. So for a graphic artist, it's it's like having a power tool, giving those people, it's not replacing these people, it's a tool for them to create work, more work faster. Um, <laughs> I gotta tell you something funny, Angel's on here, she's going, she's addicted to creating content, she can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm watching I'm watching the comments. Oh, you can see that too? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm watching the comments. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Um, well, you know, so, that's that's what I think we have to think about, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, like even in self-driving, that's a huge area for AI, don't you think? Self-driving is huge. Tesla has one of the largest um, compute platforms in, in all of AI. In fact, just two weeks ago, they added 10,000 
of these $30,000 NVIDIA cards into their platform for self-driving. Self-driving cards is a huge industry. It's great for the environment. It's going to be great for transportation. It's going to be an amazing breakthrough. You know, I don't know how much you've been in driven in Teslas, but today I was out somewhere in town and my wife was over at Ikea. And I said, I'll meet you over there. So I just said, navigate to Ikea. And it literally got me on the, drove me up the freeway, got me on the freeway, got me off the freeway, turned wherever turns had to be made and drove me right into the parking lot. Great. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, it, it's getting dramatically better. I mean, it wasn't that way at all when I first got my car. Yep. So it's yeah FSD it, version version twelve right is that what you're using? Um, you know I don't um, <laughs> from Tesla so they funny. just released version twelve yeah is that I don't even know what version and all honesty I'd have to double check I I think I'm at the most current version or is it, did did twelve just come out? It just came I don't even know if it's if it's commercially I, available I, I, yet I, I thought it was in had, beta. Okay, because I haven't gotten uh, I don't think I have twelve yet then because I don't think so. Good evening, this is Robert. Okay, <laughs> sorry. This is this is Robert Seidel. It's great to have you here tonight. This is the Gateway Show on live every Sunday evening for six to seven p.m. The number one talk station in Las Vegas, and also simulcasting on Facebook. It's also I also repost these on uh, podcast, the Gateway Podcast. Just type in Gateway Podcast Seidel. You have to put that into something else called Gateway too. So you have to make sure to mention my name also Seidel S I D E L L, and you can listen to any one of these shows later on too, on YouTube. So that's that's easy enough to find. So my friends, uh, I'm having a fun time tonight talking to John Preto, who's uh, an expert in streaming technologies. Uh, he's studying uh, the advent of artificial intelligence and how it's going to impact us. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, it's just like when, like I say, I mean, we, we could have been having this conversation 20 years ago. Maybe you and I did it once or twice. But um, like I say, we're talking about the beginning of, uh, the internet, you know, and I, by the way, I, not only, I remember also with getting the AOL hookup and that was, it seems like that was one of the early only ones, if I seem to recall, that had phone calls and phone numbers everywhere, right? And so we would have to call in to AOL. You remember that? A hundred percent. So we would call into AOL and it's super slow <laughs> and, uh, it, but it was still magic to us. And they gave all those, they gave all those discs away. That's how they got so big so fast. <laughs> And you know, yeah, yeah. Let's just say that. And a lot. Let's say that one other thing. A lot of people stayed on, subscribed to them a lot longer than they ever thought they were. But that's another yes, story. Correct. But yeah. but the bottom line is, uh, is that so? You and I have seen just that's what about approximately thirty years ago. So in thirty years, we're seeing now, streaming has made many things obsolete. We used to have the, the uh, all the video stores, you know, and all the different, you know, and even the red boxes in the in the. Uh, March supermarkets, when we wanted to rent our DVDs, right? Blockbusters, video. We, you know, we all have grown through that. And now suddenly, well, there are no more. Obviously, there's no more blockbusters for sure. And yeah, I love it when Angel's saying the creative process unleashed. Angel, I've never met you, but it sounds like you're excited by all this. I think that's great. In fact, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> but it's, um, the thing is, it's an exciting, it is an exciting time to be alive. I think sometimes when you listen to the news media, you'd think that the world is coming to an end. And I'm not trying to say that there aren't some challenges that we face. There are. But but I like to remind people that if we stay open-minded, that the best is yet to come. And I think that's a, and I think that all this AI and things holds the possibility for making life smoother, better, and more secure for people. Don't you think? 100%. So if you listen to Sam Altman, Sam Altman is the CEO of OpenAI. And, and they're huge proponents of beneficial um, movement forward for AI. And, and that's part of why they started the company was good for all, AI for all. They're super, super optimistic and super excited about what it can do for society and, and, and humanity in general. And I think that's what we need to, oh, and Angel's saying they're also afraid, afraid for good reason. Well, you know, <clears throat> we never know what, I'd love to tell you we should know what to be afraid of or not, but I'm not sure that we really know in life. It's the things that are at least expected sometimes that crop up to cause problems. But it is, it's a new power, right? It's like a new power, and it's just a matter of how we use it. And it's easy to say that, but that's what's going to determine the future, don't you think? It's just like nuclear, nuclear proliferation, same exact thing. 
even scarier than that. Yeah, and I mean, when we go ahead. When we get to artificial general intelligence, where it's able to think for itself, it 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 can be really really scary, and we're about a decade away from that. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people talk about. And of course, there's a fair number of movies on that topic. Uh, you know what? Well, you and I both believe in God as well, and I'm sure a lot of people do that are listening as well. In one sense, I'm not not even going to tell you how anybody should believe in God when it's a talk right here. But but the bottom line is that. It's, 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 I'll ask you that question. I'll, that's a question I was going to ask you anyway, so I'm going to ask you now. So how do you think AI fits into having faith in God? This is a great question. In fact, we are working on this uh, directly through Christian.com. We're integrating AI. We believe that AI will be the most profound teachers of, of God's Word, and hence the ability for us to integrate it into, into the site where people have access to to ask questions and, and get answers back because it's based upon uh, the Bible or the Bibles. There's 30 bu different Bibles that we use to create the um, the works that, that the AIs are built upon. So it takes the information directly for the Bible that's regurgitated out through AI. Hmm. I'm just looking here. For some reason, we're having a little bit of a, uh, I don't know if it's, I, it looks like the uh, internet is somehow struggling a little bit, which is, I haven't had this happen. No, that's back now. Okay, that's good. Well, that's, see, that's what's very interesting, isn't it? It's like, to what extent, um, to what extent, uh, it's like, so when we first started getting technological improvement, people, some people immediately thought, well, we're beyond God now. I think, you know, going back 100 years ago or so, or 150, 200 years. And that was one of the original kind of reactions, I think, to modern technology. But to me, it's all part of God never loses relevance. Correct. We, st we still live in a divine world. That's and right. there's still morals and all sorts of things that we've got we've to tune into to live a good life. So you can have the most powerful tools and, and toys and whatever you want to call them. But if people aren't living in a moral and good way, it's still not going to be a good world, is it? Agreed. Yeah. So you so you think that uh, you'll be able to spread interesting. You said there's 30 different Bibles. Well, I guess if you include all the different uh, the different translations, is that what you're referring to? Correct. Yes. Yeah, and it's, there are a lot of different ones, and it's quite fascinating. Uh, and, and and different translations can mean quite a bit different. Uh, they can have different quite a bit different feels to what they mean. One of my favorite scriptures is, uh, I think it's Lever um, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 1. And it's where it says, God, it, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the, th the evidence of things unseen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So to me, it's like saying that's a formula. If you have faith, that can move you into the realm of substance, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. But that's a pretty, pro a very profound statement. But I've read some more recent versions of it, and they sort of change it around in a way that it doesn't. It's not as powerful as that. But all I'm saying, so, so the bottom line is, uh, you know, subtle nuances can change the meaning quite a bit, can't they? Yeah. And in, in addition to that, we'll be able to do recreations of. of imagine um, having things recreated from the Bible, where we're able to take AI and recreate the, you know, the parting of the seas, and you're at at the ark with Noah. Those kinds of that kind of imagery will be available to be recreated in the platform as well. Well, you know what? Uh, I, for earlier, it's so funny. When you said, yeah, I asked you about the, the effect of God and AI, I thought you were going to say, yeah, we're working on that. We're working on a, putting a link into God, <laughs> a streaming link to God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what we need, a streaming link from God. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, you know what? I think, so. so if you were to, if you could, wave a magic wand and kind of predict or, or wish that things unfolded a certain way, what would you like them to be related to AI? Um, a ton of the, you know, challenges that, that uh, could be overcome, which are on the horizon within, you know, the next couple of decades. I think fusion power is one of them. So energy could basically be, go to zero. And so a lot of the work that's being done, and here's a good, here's a good analogy. Chess has been solved by computers. Um, you know, it's happened in 1997. 
computers beat uh, Kasparov, 1997. So 25 years ago, that happened. Today, the cheap chess computer that you can run on your phone is better than Magnus Carlsen, who's the top player in the world. Guess what? Really? Wow. Chess, chess has never been so popular as it is today. So all, although computers have solved it, it's chess is still popular as a game. And so AI is, is going to expand us as human beings and to be a tool for us to, to move forward and, and, and achieve amazing things, fusion power, uh, material sciences, solar power. P power is going to go to zero, basically. Power is going to be free, um, and that's going to open up all kinds of possibilities for people. Well, you know, and healthcare, healthcare is another gigantic move forward as well. Yeah, no, I... I, by the way, I, I've often thought that too. That sooner or later, power will become free or close to free. I mean, however, correct. Yes. Those, it'd be such good ways to 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 generate it that are and, and pollution free too. Yes, you know, I they, they've got to be there. They're they're all out there right now. Really, it's just a matter of us seeing them. Yeah, no, it's fusion, very, very fusion's carb carbon neutral. There you go, uh, fusion, and I think yeah, some way or another. And you know what? But here's the funny thing, though, John. Even if we had fusion power today, you might say, oh, well, humanity would be perfect. Not really. We still have all the same issues as human beings. We just wouldn't have any problem with power. You know, it's like, because we still have to figure out how to live together in supportive ways to each other, don't we? True. So, so we're going to go, oh, we're, we're going to break again. Whoops, let's go down here. Virus protection. Hold on. I don't need that. So, all right, we're going to go to a break. This is Robert Seidel. It's The Gateway Show. I'm interviewing John Preto, and uh, he's an AI expert, artificial intelligence expert, sharing a lot of different ideas and possibilities of where we all might be. He's predicting uh, free fusion power and uh, tremendous advancement in medicine. I'm sure you're right. I mean, well, we're going to go to a break right now. We'll, I'll keep talking to you on Facebook for a couple minutes, and then when we come back, we'll have a couple of my friends will be with us also. So um, we'll be back in a minute. This is Robert Seidel, The Gateway Show. You know, uh, I remember there was a Star Trek episode. Did you ever watch Star Trek at all? Have you ever huge, watched that show? Huge fan. Did you, did you like The Next Generation? Did you ever watch that show? I, I like The Next Generation, but I like I like Brave New Worlds, which is running right now. Really? Is that a new version of Star Trek? Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that one. I saw the one it's with fantastic. Picard. Huh. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, oh, Angel says she's watched every episode six times or more. That's it's pretty better much like than Picard. Better than Picard. Really? Brave New World. Better than that. Picard. Angel. Brave I, New World. You sound like us in our family. But I was going to say, she said she's watched every episode six times. Well, there's an episode <laughs> where Captain Picard has to get his heart replaced. And it's just like sort of a standard thing. Oh, I'm going to leave. I'll be back. I'm going to get my heart fixed. I'm replaced, yeah. actually, or whatever they're going to do to it. I don't know if you remember that episode. Yeah. Probably Angel does, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, although, it, you know, it has to be a good story, right? So they actually ended up having some problems and he could have died, as it turns out. But but I think those potentials will exist. But still, no matter how good we get at that kind of stuff, we still are mortal beings. We still only have For so sure. much time on this earth. And yeah. that's the thing I think that a lot of people forget about. Or sometimes, people, maybe they don't forget. I don't know. Maybe people don't forget. I shouldn't really say that. But uh, it's we still need to have some kind of connection to God that guides us through this changing world. But... Uh, well, it sounds like you are you have your hands full for learning, learning new things. It, and and it's, it's coming like a it's like a, you know, a fire hose of information because the, the technical um, innovation is happening so quickly. It's impossible to keep up. Um, yeah, I think that, by the way, that's what I I think we've entered this era. You live, we, you know, of course, easy to look back a hundred a couple hundred years ago and think like, well, days of Benjamin Franklin, there wasn't as much knowledge to be absorbed but, but somehow i don't think it was any easier in spite of that fact oh here comes ernie hi ernie how you doing okay all right robert Oops, hi, ernie. you have to lift yourself up a little bit ernie you're, there you go that's better that's it now you're a little too high there there you go. Go. hopefully we'll have it on there in a minute ernie yeah. i can't remember if you've met ernie ernie is no, a, I, no i haven't met john no i haven't met ernie is a from india but he's lived here oh, the great. last a long, long time, like last 50 well, years. a long so, time, right? right? Back in the mid 60s, been there. Uh -huh. And uh, he's, he's actually an ordained minister, also, as well as nice. uh, 
does a various different things, including being a school teacher some of the time, right? Yes, sub teacher. Yes, a guest teacher. <laughs> oh, listen, angels, come on here. This is fun, angel. You should call me sometime. Th that was Samaritan Snare episode from season two, by the way, <laughs> the one I told her. <laughs> hey, you, you have watched them all. I could tell you some other. One. We could talk, angel, about a lot of them. I once thought it'd be fun to write a book, and probably somebody has written it that you could really come to almost every theological teaching from some episode of Star Trek. They've explored almost every issue. Oh, yeah. we're coming back on the radio. Hold on just a second. Here we go. <laughs> snare, Merit, and Snare. I love that. <laughs> now I'm going to have to watch it. Um, this is Robert Seidel. It's The Gateway Show. Uh, the Gateway Show and discussion of Star Trek all at the same time. No, But actually, tonight we're here uh, with John Preto, who is... Um, an expert in artificial intelligence and streaming technologies, which if you think about it is one of the hottest, most important topics facing all of us because it has a potential of changing almost every single business in ways we can't even imagine. Changing driving. I mean, I, I, I really think, how long do you think it'll be, John, before the average new car will have very high proficient self-driving? What do you think? Uh, this decade. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. So within yeah. the next seven years. Uh, I yeah, that's what I was I've told people I, I say within five years you won't be able to buy a car that doesn't have advanced self-driving in it yeah and it's and you know people are going to want it because much to the chagrin of personal injury attorneys but it's uh which I am actually but uh the it's going to reduce accidents dramatically you know the Tesla has a lot of research that when their users are they can compare them when they have AI the self-driving in uh, operating and not and when they have it operating, their accidents are much lower. Which makes sense. That's how airplanes, airplanes fly on auto, autopilot too. Machines are, no, it's not, the thing about the AI for Tesla is you still pay attention. When I was driving today, two different times it made a mistake. I had to just kind of intervene. But but 95% of the time, it's very very good. And that's way better than it used to be. Um, so, you know, and that's good also for getting people who are getting older because you know, people will be able to maybe drive and still be able to get out and around uh, with with uh, modern self driving technology, so it's uh, it it is exciting, but it will it brings change, doesn't it? I'm actually serious. I mean, what is what will be the impact on accidents? What will be the future for personal injury attorneys if yeah. our accidents are dramatically reduced? You know what I'm saying? Good question. Now, yeah, the only I've, the, I've oh, seen ahead, some I, of the I've seen some of the numbers. They're spectacular. They're like one or two percent compared to humans. Right. I mean, that's that's the thing just makes sense if it's done right and now i will say though that it's going to, the only thing that's going to slow it down is we have a huge fleet of existing cars right so even if you had the most perfect technology tomorrow it's going to take a while to replace the old cars yeah. and to, uh, to upgrade them however people do like safety and i think if they can make them close anywhere close to affordable if people really think they're going to be safer there's a good chance they'll, they'll do whatever they can to get that newer technology I think, but but still, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. Well, I've got uh, John. This is very fascinating. You've obviously given a huge amount of thought to all this. Reverend Ernie usually prepares a very beautiful prayer for us, so I'm going to let him say his prayer right now. Go ahead and say your prayer for us tonight, Ernie. All right. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, the topic for the prayer is: We can look forward to a wonderful future, uh, dear Lord. Thank you for this blessed day and for our adventurous life journey. We reach out to you now from faith within us and ask you to walk beside us, creating a wonderful future. Help us hold on strong through the trials and storms. We acknowledge that we are blessed with divine strength, patience, experience, hope, and love. May we not lose courage, but by faith, be led into the wonderful future and retain faith. Help us keep our faith strong through prayers and meditations and spreading your love through us in our day-to-day -day lives. We pray to be filled with your light and to know that all is divine in the world as you have planned and instilled within each of us. Lord, Help us to walk surrounded with grace and live our life in faith, miracles, compassion, caring, rising up to a wonderful future, creating heaven on earth. And so it is. Amen. 
Ernie, by the way, Ernie does these beautiful prayers, really. And every single prayer he does is create, crafted uniquely every week, isn't it, Ernie? And, uh, yes. <laughs> and he even has a whole book. Tell him the name of your book of existing prayers he's done. Tell, what's oh, sure. Well, my title of my book is How to Create Your Own Heaven on Earth. Show us Ernest the, Martin. Is, the book, is yeah. the book sitting right there? Hold it up to the camera so we can see uh, it. Yes, let's see if you can see it. Can you see it? A little higher, 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 higher. Yeah, lift it up. Yeah, there you go. How to Create Your Own Heaven on Earth. Yeah, it's a good great. book. Um, yes. You know what? Thank I keep you. a copy by my bed to remind myself, you know, because, you know, again, this is a good example. I, well, I'll give, give you an analogy. My son was just in Costa Rica, and he, he put in a GPS to go somewhere, and it, it took him over two rivers. And it, it, in, in each case, he just suddenly showed up at a river. And one of them, he was like, the water was up to his knees. And he, this is the only way forward was through the water. And I, like, everything's good. And he just got back. But I, as a dad, I was thinking, uh oh, gosh, he could have gotten in trouble. But the bottom line is, that's kind of what life is like. You know, we, we're in AI now, right? Where is that going to take us? We don't really know, do we? It's like that water. But we got to navigate through it. And that's, by the way, that's what I love about having faith in God. We're accessing the infinite plans of God, the infinite intelligence of God to guide us to stories that we really can't, we can't control them individually, can we, John, Ernie? We can't huh. control them, can we? See, that's, a, a, by the way, I, I, that was one of the things I was going to say that's better about getting older. You, I start to realize more and more what I'm not in control of, which is almost everything. <laughs> right? Have you figured that out yet, John? <laughs> yeah. I mean. Definitely more, more wise. Well, it's like, you know, what do we really control? I mean, uh, I remember coming to this realization I have today. I can control the people I interact with, the things I do. But beyond that, I'm not controlling all the many different things going on in our government. I have no control over any of that. I have a little bit of control. I can vote who I want to vote for. Unless I decided I want to go for politics. But at the moment, that's not on the agenda for me. So, you know, for you either, it sounds like. So so the point I'm, uh, the point I'm making is that we, we start to realize that, and we, and we also can't, Control our time on Earth, can we? As clever as we might think we are, even with AI, we can't. So, but I don't think that personally, this is the difference between me and some people. I don't think that's bad. Actually, you know what? We're going to run out of time here. So I want to say this too. This has been John Preto. Wait, wait tell me your website again. What's your website? Uh, Christian dot Christian dot com is our is our main website. Christian. Dot com. That's pretty easy to remember. Christian. Yeah, and if they want to, if they want to reach out to me, they can get me at John at Christian .com. There you go, my friends. This has been an exciting evening. Somebody, my friend says James says thank you, everyone. Have a blessed week. Let's be open to God's good. Let's I mean, I pray that the infinite spirit of love touch every person who ever hears this recording or is listening right now. Let's all be open to unexpected blessings in every way and every time. And you too, Angel. It was fun interacting. We have never uh, don't know who you were before this, but God bless you. So until, uh, the music's coming on. So the show's getting over. God bless you all. We'll be back next week. You take care of yourselves. This is Robert Seidel. Thanks, John. And thanks, Ernie. Thank Good you. talking to you both. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>